If polycystic kidney disease runs in your family, you're probably wondering, will I get it too? Here's what most people don't know. Polycystic kidney disease, or PKD, affects one in 500 people worldwide. This makes it the most common inherited cause of kidney failure. And the thing about PKD is most people don't even realize they have it until their kidneys are already damaged. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm a board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to kidney health, general health, wellness, nutrition, and longevity. Today, you're going to learn exactly what PKD is, how it develops silently over decades, and the early warning signs that could save your kidney function. Now, if you're new to the channel here, please, hit that subscribe button, hit that like and share button and the notification bell. I try to share evidence-based kidney health strategies every week. And this is part one of my complete six-part PKD series. Over the next six videos, you are going to cover everything you need to know. So today in episode one, we're going to talk about what PKD is and exactly how it develops. Then the next video is going to be episode two in which we talk about how to slow down PKD progression and be able to protect your kidneys. Episode three will dive into treatment options. All sorts of options are emerging out there from Tolbaptan to even kidney transplant and everything in between. Episode four is going to be about diet and lifestyle strategies that actually work and are grounded on the evidence out there. In episode five, we're going to look at the future of polycystic kidney disease, stem cells, gene therapy, and all the latest and greatest that's on the horizon. Now, finally, in episode six, we're going to bring all of this home by talking about the five biggest PKD myths that are really holding patients back. All right, let's start by uncovering the silent threat hiding inside the kidneys. So what exactly is polycystic kidney disease. Well, PKD occurs when there are these fluid-filled cysts that form inside the kidneys and they multiply over time. You can think of these cysts like tiny balloons. They're gradually expanding until they crowd out healthy tissue. Now, there are two main types you need to know. There's the autosomal dominant PKD or AD PKD. Now, this accounts for about 90% of all cases. So if one parent has it, each child has about a 50% chance of inheriting the gene. That's why family history is incredibly important in this process. The second type is autosomal recessive PKD or AR PKD. Now this is much rarer and usually appears in infants or young children. So with autosomal dominant PKD, there are two key gene mutations. PKD1 and PKD2. People with PKD1 mutations, they tend to reach kidney failure around the age of 54. But those who have PKD2, the average age for reaching kidney failure is around 74. That's a 20 year difference in kidney survival. Here's what makes PKD so significant. It ends up accounting for about five to 10% of all end-stage kidney disease worldwide. That makes it one of the leading hereditary causes of dialysis and transplant. But here's what most people miss. PKD, it doesn't just affect your kidneys. Most patients eventually develop some liver cyst, but about one in three will experience significant liver enlargement or symptoms. And a smaller group also develops cysts in the pancreas or the spleen. And here's the part that surprises many patients. Some patients with polycystic kidney disease, they may have brain aneurysms or heart valve abnormalities. So screening for aneurysms is especially important if there's a family history of rupture. This is why early diagnosis matters so much. Let's talk about progression. PKD is very deceptive because it can progress silently for decades. Cysts can begin forming before birth, and yet many people 
don't feel a thing until adulthood. So here's how it works. Inside the kidney, each cyst, it acts like a pump. There's a signaling molecule called cyclic AMP or CAMP. And this drives fluid secretion. And the hormone vasopressin actually amps it up. That's why dehydration or anything that raises vasopressin can accelerate cyst growth. So as cysts enlarge, kidneys may double or even triple in size. Some kidneys can weigh over 10 pounds each. Now, when it comes to imaging, radiologists measure this with something called total kidney volume or TKV for short. So when TKV increases by more than 5% each year, it actually predicts a faster decline in kidney function. Now, here's where early warning signs appear long before your lab tests change. High blood pressure occurs in about 70% of patients, even before kidney function drops. There can be slang or abdominal pain from enlarged or bleeding cysts. So there can also be blood in the urine after a cyst ruptures. Some people may have recurrent urinary tract infections or kidney stones. Here's the challenge in all of this. By the time your creatinine level rises, half your kidney function may already be gone. And that's why waiting for lab abnormalities is too late. Early recognition through imaging and blood pressure monitoring is absolutely vital. All right, quick question for everyone. In the comments, type 1 if you monitor your blood pressure regularly and type 2 if you don't. Seriously, take a second to do this because I really want to know how proactive are you guys about your health and how can I generate future content to help you take charge of your health? Now, how do we spot this disease before it takes hold? So it starts with the right imaging. Ultrasound is the first line tool. It's safe, it's inexpensive, and it can detect cysts as small as one centimeter. A CAT scan or CT scan or MRI gives a more detailed picture and allows us to measure total kidney volume to predict progression. Genetic testing can help when imaging is unclear on younger relatives who may not yet show cysts, and it can confirm the specific gene, PKD1 or PKD2, and can qualify patients for clinical trials or targeted therapies. Ongoing management involves several key steps. There's maintaining blood pressure below 120 and diastolic of under 80. Or you can even go to as low as 110 systolic if the person tolerates it. The other part is regular lab tests for kidney function and protein in the urine. And you want to make sure that you're doing periodic imaging every few years to track the growth. Then there's lifestyle changes like limiting sodium and staying well hydrated. Now, patients often ask, when should we screen our kids? So most experts, they recommend starting with genetic counseling, then considering an ultrasound, usually during adolescence, or of course, sooner if their symptoms or high blood pressure appear. Remember, the goal of all of this isn't fear, it's preparedness. So what does this mean for you? Remember, PKD follows a predictable course. The kidneys are going to get larger. Filtration is going to decline, but the rate of decline can vary very dramatically. And early intervention makes all the difference. So people who maintain a systolic blood pressure below 120 and stay hydrated can show significantly slower kidney growth. A plant-dominant diet, a healthy body weight, and keeping sodium below 2,000 or 2,300 milligrams per day, they can all reduce your cardiovascular risk, which still remains the leading cause of death in polycystic kidney disease. So keep in mind, polycystic kidney disease is the most common inherited cause of kidney failure, affecting one in 500 people worldwide. It progresses silently for decades, but... Early detection 
through imaging and blood pressure monitoring can preserve kidney function for years, even decades. Now, if this video helped you understand polycystic kidney disease, once again, please hit that like button, hit that share button, subscribe for more weekly evidence-based health content. And as always, what I tell everyone is please practice gratitude, practice kindness, not only for others, but also for yourself by taking care of your health. In the next episode, episode number two, we're going to talk about how specifically to slow down polycystic kidney disease progression, how you're going to be able to protect your kidneys. And I'm going to show you the proven evidence-based strategies to slow cyst growth and preserve your kidney function for the long term. Finally, I'd love to know your thoughts around your biggest PKD questions in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I really hope this video helped you and I'll see everyone next time.